reservation for women students the position of women in indian politics is becoming stronger day by day with strong female political figures in our country to increase the participation of women in the parliament women's reservation bill was introduced in the upper and lower house but is still pending in lok sabha despite its reintroduction women's reservation bill is a pending bill in the parliament of india which proposes to amend the constitution of india to reserve 33% seats in the lower house of the parliament lok sabha and in all state legislative assemblies for women the original idea for this bill originated from a constitutional amendment which was passed back in 1993 the constitutional amendment stated that a random one third of village council leader or sarpanch positions in the gram panchayat should be reserved for women the women's reservation bill was launched as a long term plan to extend this reservation to lok sabha and state legislative assemblies currently a third of the seats in all local bodies are reserved for women as per the 73rd and 74th amendment act of the constitution of india passed in 1993 over the years some 16 states have increased this quota to 50% in panchayati raj institutions so students the 73rd and 74th amendments to the constitution provide for reservation of 1/3 of the seats for women in gram panchayats panchayat samitis zilla parishads municipalities and municipal corporations as well as for the post of sarpanch chairman and mayor maharashtra and 15 other states have reserved 50% seats for women this provision provides women the opportunity to participate in the business of the community
in the post independence period the constitution of india accepted the principle of equality of men and women hence women got the important political right to vote women got equal rights to education and work on par with men in human practices like sati dowry and polygamy were banned by law women's rights to sue for divorce was recognized they got a lawful share in property in local self government bodies seats were reserved for women so that they would have their just share of political power students there were women chief ministers in india suchita kripalni uttar pradesh nandini satpati odisha jay lalita tamil nadu mayavati uttar pradesh vasundhra raje rajasthan mamta banerji west bengal rabdi devi bihar आनंदी बेन पटेल गुजरात शीला दीक्षित दिल्ली मेघबूबा मुफ्ती सैयद कश्मीर उमा भारती मध्य प्रदेश राजेंद्र कौर काचन पंजाब सुषमा स्वराज दिल्ली शशिकला काकोडकर गोवा सईदा अनवर तैमूर आसाम जानकी रामचंद्रन तमिलनाडु आर ऑल विमेन हु हैव लेड देयर स्टेट्स एज chief ministers we see today that due to this provisions women have begin to get education and to earn also due to ideas of women's liberation women are developing a sense of self they have began to participate enthusiastically and with determination in all fields of education earning money administration politics etc शेड्यूल कास्ट स्टूडेंट्स शेड्यूल कास्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द सोशली एंड इकोनॉमिकली डिप्राइड कास्ट ग्रुप्स 
of this society they mainly consist of agricultural laborers cultivators of small land holdings artisans petty laborers and industrial workers so students in the post independence period our constitution adopted the values of freedom equality fraternity that is brotherhood and social justice in accordance with this the practice of untouchability was banned by law untouchability was removed by the 17th paragraph of the constitution and this class was included in the scheduled caste in view of the educational and social backwardness of this caste they were given reservations in education as well as jobs to facilitate their development scheduled tribes students during independence of india the scheduled caste that is lower caste remained economically dependent politically powerless and culturally subjugated to the upper caste this impacted their overall lifestyle and access to food education and health a person shall be held to be a member of a scheduled caste or scheduled tribe if he or she belongs to a caste or a tribe which has been declared as such under the various orders issued by the government while preparing for ias exam can refer to this article to understand the various constitutional measures taken for the protection of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in india so students just like the scheduled caste the scheduled tribes or adivasis who live in remote parts of the country also face several difficulties as they have lived far away from the progress made in modern times they are economically and socially backward even though their conditions have seen some improvement in recent times they do not have any means of livelihood other than agriculture and forest produce modern farming 
implements have not yet reached them. Hence, their income from agriculture is very small. Besides, their fields are on ill sites and not fertile. They are malnourished due to insufficient and poor quality of diet. Adivasis in remote areas find it difficult to get medical attention in time. For all these reasons, there is a need to give special protection to Adivasis. In the Indian constitution, Adivasis have been enumerated as scheduled tribes. They are getting given representation in law boards, education, government service, etc. Nomadic and denotified tribes. Students, historically, nomadic tribes and denotified tribes never had access to private land or home ownership. These tribes used forests and grazing lands for their livelihood and residential use. These communities had strong ecological connections. Students, castes and tribes that move from place to place for a livelihood are included under nomadic tribes. They live by rearing animals and engaging in some other occupations. The British had declared some of them as criminal tribes. In the law of 1871 to crop crimes, some of the main groups were mentioned as criminal tribes and their occupations and movements were banned. This unjust law was repealed, repealed that is cancelled in the post-independence period. And the cups on this tribes were lifted. They were included under denotified tribes. Special efforts are made by the government for the purpose of their social and economic development. These tribes have been given representation in educational institutions and the government sector.
minorities. Students, a minority group by its original definition refers to a group of people who practices race, religion, ethnicity or other characteristics are lesser in numbers than the main groups of those classifications. So students, in any society, a group of people of a particular religion, language or race who are few in number are termed as minority. As there are various religions, sects and languages in our country, we see great cultural diversity. There is variation in cultural traditions too. In order to preserve their cultural traditions and develop their own language, the constitution gives the citizens certain educational and cultural rights. Minorities have the right to protect and conserve their language, culture and traditions. Constitution gives the citizens certain educational and cultural rights. For this purpose, they have the right to set up separate educational institutions. The government implements various schemes for their progress. So students, we have learned in this chapter empowerment of women and other weaker sections about manifestation of women power, the Chipko movement, anti liquor movement, International Women's Year, Laws for Women, Awareness Against the Dowry Tradition, Family Courts of 1984 Trial 
involving alimony 1985 the commission of sati prevention act reservation for women schedule caste schedule rights nomadic and denotified tribes and minorities so students in the next chapter we shall learn about the progress that india has made in the field of science and technology in the post independence period Thank you.